This is the grade 12 CAT or Computer Application Technology Prac Exam Paper 1 for November 2022. And this is our web series where we're dealing with all the questions from the exam paper. And this is video one where we cover the word question. So let's get straight into it. So we are dealing with a KwaZulu-Natal tourist attractions. And the first question is the word processing question. So I've already opened up the one tourism word document. I've got it over here. And they ask me to change the font of the text extract from report to small caps. That's the first question for 1.1. So let's go to the tourism one document. And so there's the extract from report. They tend to highlight the text that you're going to be interacting with. And we want to change it to small caps. Now I'm going to come here to font. I'm going to click on that little, I think it's called the dialog box launcher for the font. So we click on that. And we can see there's the small caps option. So make sure that you've selected the text first. That makes the first important bit. So now we select small caps. So the other letters will be encapsulated, but slightly smaller. So I click OK. And there we go. It's in small caps. Question 1.2. Apply the text fill effect to the word art text KwaZulu-Natal National Tourism as follows. We want a rectangular type gradient fill and the first gradient stop at 60% position. Now, what does that all mean? So let's go first of all, look at the word art. So we're going to come over here. So we're dealing with that over there. So I'm going to click on it to select it. So we're going to get to the shape format. Let's go over there and see what options are available to us. And if we come back to the question, the first thing is rectangular type gradient fill, a rectangular type gradient fill. So if we come here to the fill, the shape fill, now they were talking not about the shape fill, but the actual font fill, if I remember correctly, the text fill. So we're going to click over here. So we're going to go here to gradient and you see all these different options. I'm not sure which one to select. So I'm just going to go to more gradients to see what we've got there. So we want a gradient fill for the text. We did say that. And if you remember, correctly they said a gradient rectangular fill so let's go look maybe it's under here ah oh, there's rectangles let's do rectangular type fill there we go that's fine and then it said the first gradient stop at 60 percent position now these are the gradient stops you see there's a few of them there are four of them so they want the first one so i'm going to click on the first one and we want it stop at 60 percent position so there's position i'm just going to change that to 60 percent and see what it does so if i do that there we go that seems to be what they want okay so i've set those settings that seems to be correct so there we go so let's move on to the next question 1.3 modify the style named show casting so that all the subheadings will display it as shown below so they wanted to make it look like that and they're giving us the ruler just so that we can indicate when the different indentations must happen so let's go have a look so we're going to come over here to introduction so let's select introduction and there you can see that show casting is selected that's the one we want to change so i'm going to right click on show casting we want to modify this particular style so i'm going to click on that style and if you remember correctly let's go look at the diagram again they wanted a paragraph indentation that's set at zero so the paragraph set at zero the left part there and another hanging indent is probably going to be over here that's probably about a 1.5 so there we go and the numbering so there's even a numbering style it's 0.1 so there's a numbering style as well so just take note of that because our introduction doesn't have a numbering so let's first of all go to the indentation so let's come over here and see what we've got let's go to the paragraph and here we can see the indentation so we want the left indentation to be set as zero centimeters so we'll leave it at that and then we want a hanging indentation that's set to 1.5 if i remember correctly 1.5 centimeters so we're going to do that and click ok there's the first little set that we've done so hanging left zero centimeters hanging indent 1.5 and then we wanted to add a number in so let's go to number in and let's see if we can get a style for zero one so at the moment they are all there's no zero one option so we're going to find our new number format and i'm going to make it zero one let's see if there's an option available i don't Ah, oh, there's one that looks like the one we want. So I'm going to take that one. So zero one, zero two, zero three. So it's two decimal. It's two values for the whole number. So it's a zero one. So there, that's the one that I want. I'm going to click OK. Boom. Click OK. So there we go. So it's going to have that numbering system. And it's going to have that. But you'll notice now that because we've done the numbering, it's changed the left to 0.63 and the hanging. So I'm actually going to go redo that. That was quite tricky there because we had to do the numbering first. So I'm going to come back here to the paragraph and you'll see that it's changed because because we did the numbering system so let's go back here to change that to zero and then the hanging indent must be to 1.5 okay boom. 
So there we go. We can do that. So there we go. So just double check. Left is zero. Hanging is 1.5. And the numbering, I think if you go further down, you'll, it'll mention in the numbering system there. So just be careful of that. You'll see that when we did the numbering, it did change our hanging and our left index. So that was a little tricky bit. So there we go. If I click on it, there we go. It seems to be aligned quite nicely with what we wanted to do. So yeah, very tricky. But let's remember that little trick at the end. Find the citation in the third paragraph that refers to the Department of the Statistics of Africa. So let's go find that citation in the third paragraph. Here's the third paragraph. There is the Department of Statistics of South Africa. There's the citation. And we want to convert the citation to static text. So I'm going to click over there to see what options are available and convert to static text. It's literally that easy. Finding it and then go and change it like that. That's an easy one mark that you can get. Now 1.5. Find the text question 1.5 and replace it with a circle relation smart arc graphic as shown so let's go find the text we're going to scroll down over here and there we go that we must replace this text with a smart art diagram and it must look like this so they want a circle relationship graphic as shown below format the font size of the text tourism to 14 points so there we go so we want something that looks like that so let's go have a look we want circle relation smart art graphic so i'm going to come here to insert and we want a smart art so i'm going to click on smart art and we want a circle a circle relationship so let's click on relationship and see what options are available oh there is that looks like a circle one that looks like the one yep that's the one we want i'm going to click on that one i'm going to click ok and see what we get so we get those options now they want me to put employment in that option so i'm going to come over here and type in employment employment and then in the other box there is transport and there's food so let's come over here and put transport and we need another bubble you'll notice there that there's food and we don't have food so we're gonna have to add another bubble another circle so if I come here if we on the smart art design ribbon you'll see there's add a shape so let's go and add a shape I've got a feeling that it's gonna be added after so let's go add a shape after boom and there's my little dot let's see if it matches there we go there and that one must be food so on this one we're going to edit the text and put in food edit the text type in food and then in the middle one don't forget the middle one we want that one to be tourism so I type in tourism and they said that they wanted that block there to be 14 point font size so I'm going to select this particular block and change its font to 14 point font size so come over here let's change that to 14 point so there we go so it just changes that one it doesn't change the other ones so there we go so I think that's all done correctly so those are the level twos and that's the level one so let's go back i think that looks pretty spot on so 1.6 find and replace all occurrences of the exact word that's key thing exact word tourism with a highlighted word tourism so take note of the caps that's in small letters so we just take in the word we replace it with itself but we changing it to a highlighted word so let's go over here to find replace we're going to come here to find and there's find replace let's click on replace we're looking for the word tourism and we want the exact word so i'm going to click on more here and we want the exact word find whole words only for it to be exact means be exact words so we don't want it to be capital letters and we don't want it to be part of other text so what i'm going to do to make it exact i'm going to match the case and find whole words only just to make sure that we find it exactly and then we want to change it to the word tourism but we want to highlight that particular word so i'm going to come here to format there's highlight and we can change it to whatever particular color i don't know what color they've actually said so that's going to be highlighted so let's see what that does if we say replace all let's go have a look so there's one there's one there's a couple of them there we go we can see that words like tourism there hasn't changed and if i scroll down you'll see all the words seem to be fine like words like that hasn't changed because we wanted to find the exact word tourism so there we go so there are the changes to those words so there we go 1.7 find the text that starts with public relations and ends with the effects of the pandemic and we're going to place it into two columns and change the orientation of only this text to landscape so let's go find public relations let's scroll down there we go there's the text public relations and communications and we want to go until the effects of the pandemic so let's go find the effects of the pandemic scroll down effects of the pandemic let's go scroll 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 maybe we'll see something further down oh there we go lucky i thought we we're going too far there we go so there's effects of the pandemic so we want all of that to be in two columns but we want the orientation of only this text to be in landscape so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the landscape first part let's do that part first so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come here to layout 
and insert a next page section break. And the reason why I use a section break is because I want to change this to landscape, but I want to keep the rest of it to portrait. And then at the end of this text over there, we want the rest of this of the pages to be back into portrait. So I'm going to insert another next page break there so that we can see if we come over here, you can see the little that the section break ends over there. So we've got this section. So whatever I do to this section will not affect the other section. So if I come here to layout, I can now change the orientation to landscape. There we go. And you'll notice that all the pages above it have not changed to landscape, just this one and this one. And then it over here reverts back to portrait. So it's just those pages, thankfully, thankfully. And then we want to select all of this text, select it all, and we want to change it into two columns. So we're going to come here to columns and place it into two columns. So don't give me any other details besides the fact that it's in two columns. So there we go. Now it's in two columns and there we can see the rest of the pages are still portrait, but these are in landscape. And then I'm actually going to just make this a bit smaller if I just press up there so that it can all fit on one page. There we go. So now we've got a nice little layout there. So two columns and it's in its own landscape format. Next, 1.8. Find the heading pandemic and mark it as an index entry and add a sub entry called COVID to this main index entry. So let's go find. We're going to scroll further down. Let's go find the word, not COVID, but pandemic. There's the word pandemic. We select pandemic. We're going to select it. And you'll notice that I've got this hard seek on. So we can see if we're going to add like a little index to it. So let's come here to references. And you can see that they wanted us to mark it as an index entry and add a sub entry called COVID to this main index. So we're going to come over here to mark entry. So we're going to mark it. And then we're going to have a sub entry, which they specified must be the word COVID as the sub entry. So we're going to type in here COVID. And that's all the details I think they give me to change. So let's click on mark and close and there you can see it's marked it as an entry and it's at COVID as a sub entry. Let's go to 1.9 insert a bibliography in the Harvard Angela bibliography style below the text question 1.9 so that's we I think we saw question 1.9 over here there's question 1.9 we're going to click over there we're going to take the hard sequel for now we're going to come to references we're going to insert a bibliography so I'm going to first select a style so let's go see. oh we want that style first and then we can now select insert the bibliography Okay, so there we go. And then we're going to come to 1.10, insert index below the text 1.10 so that the page numbers will be right aligned with a solid line tab leader. Add an index below 1.10. So let's go over here. We're going to add an index. So we're going to come here to there's insert an index. And we want so that page numbers will be right aligned with a solid line leader. So page numbers will be right aligned with a solid line tab leader. So we want a solid line. So that's the solid line over there. See the solid line right aligned and we click OK. And so there we can see they're right aligned and there's the solid line tab leader. You can see our pandemic and COVID has been added there from the previous question. And 1.11, the last one, do the following. Open the poster using a P1. OK, so this is, first of all, save this document. Let's save this all. We're going to save everything. Boom. And now they want me to go to the files. And you can see there is the one poster.exe. I think it's a zipped file. Open it and use P1 star as the password. So P1 star will be the password. So let's go do that. So click on poster. We're going to extract in the exact same place. I'm happy with that. I'm going to click extract. And the password we said was P1 star. Make sure that you type it in correctly. It's capital P1 star. I think that's the password. Let's click OK. So it's extracted the poster. There we go. They wanted me to extract it. Paste the group of five images from that poster into the tourism document below the text question 1.11. So I think there's some more over here. Okay, so over here we're going to have to do some more stuff. We're going to paste the group of five images. Edit the five images so that they appear like that. So let's go find those images in that poster that we just extracted. So there we go. We, we've got those images. So I'm going to just select all. It's so one whole group. So I'm going to Click on it and we'll copy it and paste it into model diagram over here. So let's click on paste. So there they are. But we want them to look like this. So they are in the right order if I could see that. But we want them to be inside of those little shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go right click. I can click on each one and then we get the picture format. 
So if I come here to fix a format, we can crop it according to a particular shape. Now what shape do they want? They want something that looks like that. It looks like a hexagon or something like that. So if I crop it by a particular shape, we want something that looks like that. If I'm correct, does that look right? There we go. And I'm just going to do that. I'm going to do that to all of them quickly. I wonder if I can select all of them and then crop them all at the same time. So I pressed shift when I selected all of them. So take note, I clicked on one, press shift, click on all of them individually. So all the images are done. Let's see what happens if we crop them all in one go using that shape. Where was it again? There it is, that one. There we go. So they're all in the right shape, but we want this to be on top of each other and it's got nice little lines like that. So let's go back here and let's go move. We're going to click on that one. Let's click on that one. Let's move it so that it's lined. There we go. That looks a little bit better. So there we go. So there we've got our images. We didn't have to ungroup it, but if you ever have to, you can always right click and you can ungroup it and move individually if you wanted to. But there we go. I think that's exactly what they wanted. And that's the end of question one. I think we've done. We can now make sure that we've saved all our changes and now we can move on to question two, which I think will be another word question. The data files and the links to the other videos can be found in the video descriptions. So I'll just click over there. Make sure that you click on that subscribe button to support the channel. Leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.